Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving for a complex number. So z is a complex number and we're going to be solving for different values of z. How many values are there do you think? Let's find out. I'll be presenting two methods and let's start with the first one. The first method, don't hate me for this, is longer but it's a general approach so that's why it's important. Now we're going to replace z with x plus yi. Since z is a complex number, it can be expressed in the standard form, where x is the real part and y is the imaginary part. Let's go ahead and substitute it. We're going to get x plus yi plus i equals x plus yi multiplied by i. So we're basically looking for an interesting complex number when we add i to it or when we multiply it by i, we get the same answer. Is that possible at all? Let's find out. So we're going to organize this a little bit, putting the real and imaginary parts together. So for example, here, these two are both imaginary parts. So this means one i, by the way, when the number is not written. We can write this as x plus y plus one i. And on the right hand side, we're going to multiply by i. And remember, we talked about this in the lecture notes, right? If you haven't checked them out yet, Go ahead and check it out. And I, I pretty much try to break down the basics in the fundamentals videos. Now, when you multiply a complex number by i, it's basically giving it a rotation of pi over 2 radians or 90 degrees. Make sense? So if you have a number like this, you're going to turn it into something like this. And of course, if you have a number like this, then you're basically giving it a 90 degree turn, so it's going to look like this. Okay. So Let's see how that works with the algebra. Uh, we're going to multiply x times i. And then when you multiply these, this comes up a lot, so you kind of need to memorize this. I mean, it'll help. i times i is i squared, so you can just write it uh, as negative 1. So it's going to be minus y. Let's go ahead and write the right-hand side in standard form, negative y plus xi. Now remember, when two complex numbers are equal, a plus bi, and c plus di, then we can safely say that their real parts are equal and their imaginary parts are equal. This is one equation, but it gives you two equations. So let's go ahead and do the same thing here. x equals negative y, and y plus 1 equals x. Remember, the imaginary part is the number in front of i, the coefficient of i not, does not include i. So now we've got a system which is very easy to solve because both of these equations are equal to x. So we can basically set these equal to each other. So y plus 1 equals negative y. Add y to both sides and subtract 1. You get this. And then divide by 2 and you get the y value. y is equal to negative 1 half. Great. What about the x value? Well, x is the opposite of negative y from the first equation. I would use the first one, it's easier. So x should be positive 1 half. And since my number, z, can be written as x plus yi, I can basically write it as 1 half plus negative 1 half, but I can put a minus sign and multiply by i, and we're all set. This brings us to the end of the first method, of course, not to the end of the video, because we're going to do the second method second. All right, so let's go back to the equation z plus i equals zi. We're trying to find a complex number, and like I said earlier, the first method is more general, which is applicable to very many different uh, scenarios, but the second one is a little special, because it only works if our expression can be made factorable. And in this case, what happens is, you can put the z's together and factor it. So let's go ahead and isolate i, and subtract z from both sides, and then I can now factor out a z, I'm putting the, you know, z on the right hand side, but that's okay, you should get used to it, and then divide both sides by i minus 1 to get the z by itself. So let's divide by i minus 1, but what is i minus 1? Like, it's not in the standard form, so let's go ahead and switch it around. So let me put the z on the left hand side and write this in standard form. How do you write i minus 1 in standard form? You can write it as negative 1 plus positive i. Great. Now, how do you divide with complex numbers? You can't just divide like real numbers or integers. You need to 
think about the meaning of division, right? It's basically kind of like the inverse for operation. So we're going to use conjugate to take care of that. Let's multiply by negative 1 minus i, the top and the bottom, and we'll be set. Now let's go ahead and distribute z equals, if you multiply by i, you're going to get negative i minus i squared. Let's go ahead and write it that way. That's fine. And at the bottom, I need to get sum of two squares because remember, when you multiply z and z bar, which is the conjugate of z, you always get a real number, right? So it's going to be sum of two squares, and the real part is negative 1, and the imaginary part is 1, okay? i squared is negative 1, so this is going to become positive 1, and then we get z equals 1 plus i divided by 1 plus 1, which is 2. Wait a minute, did I get the same answer as before? Uh, pretty close. Yes, you can split it up and write it like this. Break it down, 1 half plus 1 half i. Wait a minute, isn't that supposed to be a negative? Yes, because I messed up. Apologies. This is supposed to be a minus sign, and this is supposed to be a minus sign, of course. That's why it's good to do sometimes uh, in two methods so that you can kind of check your work, which is what I did. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.